In this section, we'll look at the 12 cranial nerves, the sympathetic trunk, and the cervical nerves. The cranial nerves are numbered by the order in which they leave the cranial cavity. Earlier in this tape, we saw them emerging from the brain. In this section, we'll follow the course of each nerve, look at its principal branches, and summarize its functions. We'll begin with the first six cranial nerves. The first, the olfactory, and the second, the optic, transmit our senses of smell and of eyesight. The third, the ocular motor, the fourth, the trochlear, and the sixth, the adducent, are motor nerves to the eye muscles. And the fifth, the trigeminal, is a large motor and sensory nerve to the face and jaws. The first cranial nerve, the olfactory nerve, is extremely short. It consists of a series of fine filaments which arise from the olfactory bulb on the underside of the frontal lobe. On each side, the olfactory bulb lies here, just above the cruciform plate. Here's a frontal section in the dry skull that goes through the cruciform plates. They're here. On each side, the cruciform plate forms the narrow roof of the nasal cavity. Here's a medial view of the nasal cavity. The cruciform plate is here. The filaments of the olfactory nerve, here they are in close-up, pass through the cruciform plate and run just beneath the mucous membrane to reach nerve endings in this olfactory area on the lateral and medial surfaces of the nasal cavity. The next nerve we'll look at is the second cranial nerve, the optic nerve. We've seen the proximal ends of the optic nerves emerging from the optic chiasm. Here's the optic nerve passing forward beneath the dura to enter the optic canal, which starts here. Here's the optic canal in the dry skull. Here on each side of the optic chiasm are the divided internal carotid arteries. Just beneath the chiasm is the root of the pituitary fossa. Here's the divided stalk of the pituitary gland. To follow the optic nerve, we remove the roof of the orbit, leaving the optic canal intact. We remove this nerve and the orbital fat, and these two muscles, which we'll see later. Here's the optic nerve. It enters the orbit between the tendons of origin of the rectus muscles. It passes forwards and laterally to enter the back of the eyeball. Strictly speaking, the optic nerve isn't a nerve, it's an extension of the brain. It's covered throughout its course by extensions of all three meningeal layers, dura, arachnoid, and ear. Here, we've made a window in the dura surrounding the optic nerve. Here's the edge of the dura. Here's the nerve itself. Here's the arachnoid. The dura is continuous with the outer layer of the eyeball, the sclera. We'll be returning here shortly. For now, we'll put the contents of the orbit back in place. The optic chiasm is a crossover point for optic nerve fibers. The fibers of each nerve that connect to the medial half of the retina cross over into the opposite optic tract. The fibers that connect to the lateral halves of the retina stay on the same side. Now we'll move on to look at the third, fourth, and sixth cranial nerves, the ocular motor, trochlear, and abducent. They're motor nerves. Between them, they supply the six muscles that move the eye, and also the levator of the upper lid. As we've seen, the ocular motor nerve arises between the cerebral peduncles, the trochlear nerve arises from the back of the midbrain, and the abducent nerve arises below the pons. The bony opening that these three nerves pass through is the superior orbital fissure, but their openings in the dura are quite a bit further back. The ocular motor nerve passes through the dura just alongside the posterior clinoid process, which is here. The trochlear nerve passes through the dura here. The abducent nerve down here. 
to follow them. We'll remove the dura over this area. We'll also remove this structure that we'll see later, the trigeminal ganglion. This cavity that we've opened into is the cavernous sinus. In the living body, it's filled with venous blood. Within the cavernous sinus lies the internal carotid artery. The third, fourth and sixth nerves pass forward in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. Here's the ocular motor, here's the trochlear, here's the abducent. All three nerves pass forward into the orbit through the superior orbital fissure, which is here. The seven muscles in the orbit that these nerves supply are the four rectus muscles, the two oblique muscles, and the levator of the upper lid. The ocular motor nerve supplies five muscles, the trochlear and abducent nerves supply just one muscle each. To follow these nerves, we'll move forward to the orbit again. We'll divide and displace the two muscles in the roof of the orbit. These are the levator of the upper eyelid, levator palpebris superioris, and beneath it, the superior rectus muscle. Here's the optic nerve, as we've seen already. Here's the superior oblique muscle going round its pulley, or trochlea. Here are the medial rectus and lateral rectus muscles. We'll go round to a front view to see the nerves better. The ocular motor nerve divides into an upper and lower branch. Here's the upper branch supplying the levator palpebris superioris and superior rectus muscles. To see the lower branch, we'll remove the optic nerve. Here again are the medial and lateral rectus muscles. Down here is the inferior rectus. The only muscle not on view here is the inferior oblique, which is beneath the eyeball here. Here's the lower branch of the ocular motor nerve. It supplies the medial rectus and inferior rectus and the inferior oblique muscles. In addition, by these tiny, short ciliary branches, the ocular motor nerve gives parasympathetic motor supply to muscles within the eye which cause constriction of the pupil, the sphincter pupillae and ciliary muscles. Here's the trochlear nerve, the fourth cranial nerve. It supplies just the superior oblique muscle. Here's the abducent nerve, the sixth, supplying its one muscle, the lateral rectus, which abducts the eye. We'll be returning to the orbit once again in just a minute to look at branches of the fifth nerve, the trigeminal. For now, we'll replace the contents of the orbit, including this nerve, the frontal nerve, which is part of what we'll come to next.